Hi guys, welcome to Marky Big Smoke. Thanks very much for joining me. Here's a quick update on what's been happening in my garden during the month of May. A week later, our first gourd seed has germinated. There we are. That's the birdhouse gourd seeds germinated. And here we have the gourds I planted, which are coming along brilliantly. Right, just showing you a quick update for the gourds, which are doing brilliantly. When each gourd has got two of these true leaves, right, that's when I'm going to pot them outside. Right, four birdhouse gourd plants from seed in the greenhouse. This is where I'm going to plant them. Right, you can see there I've got the two rebar lengths either side of that. I put a batten up between them, about three by two. And I've got the two rebars going across the gap onto that fence post and batten over there. There we go. So I've got the trellis sitting on top of the rebars. They're going to go grow up the gate when it's closed, up that structure, and across the top there. So just taking that one out of the pot. Seems to have a good root system. Like they're going to go there. I'll backfill around them and put a support of a cane in. Right. There we have our two birdhouse gourds on the left, which I'm going to give a good watering. I've got the two on this side. Give them a good watering and we'll come back in a couple of weeks see if they've grown any higher that's the update on the gourds here's a quick update on the tomato plants i've got one cane tied right across the greenhouse and from that cane i'm going to be putting strings up run a length of string down there i'm going to wind it around the the main stem right that's three strings that I've put up now. These tomato plants will lean on these strings. It's not too tight. I can always loosen it up a bit and they're going to grow nice and tight and straight, straight up. Here's a better example of a side shoot that I don't want to keep in my tomato plant. And you can see we've got two big side shoots there. Pinch it, that one there, pinch it out. And that's just come off really easily. In my hand and there's another one here I don't want a side shoot there pinch it out just make sure you don't pull any of the main stem off I'm going to try something here guys that I saw on TV this morning they showed you a industrial sized tomato greenhouse and what they did what they had on their green their tomato plants was they taken off all the lower leaves and only left the ones at the top. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to strip off all these leaves that are taking unnecessary energy from the plant so that it removes all this foliage that's in my way. I'm going to strip off all these leaves from the lower, the lower half of the plant. There we have it. That's all the lower branches stripped out. And I've just left the top branches and obviously when you get fruit setting I'll leave those. That's my tip for growing tomato plants in small spaces. Another little tip guys don't forget to plant your French marigolds if you're planting them outside in soil and uh, it's been proven that marigolds especially the French ones help protect the tomato plant against nematodes and these nematodes 
if they get into the soil of the tomato plant they'll make the tomato plant deformed and so got my little marigold all planted from seed one packet of seeds looks like a slug's had a go at that one but got a little root system going there and I'm just going to put it into this pot here get my thumb down there put the marigold in and I'm going to leave it like that guys put some soil in from the pot where the marigold was transplanted from All right I'm going to leave that like that and I'm going to do that for all these tomato plants here I've got loads here look this is my tray of marigolds turns out that I had plenty of these little seedlings I could plant two or three per pot and uh, that way if there are any nematodes in that soil or compost of my own my own compost as you can see then uh, hopefully this will ward them off what we've got here is my empty compost bin this one's full up that one's completely empty but I've got a sneaky feeling at the bottom of here there's some nice compost the way I built this uh, this compost system is it's got a sliding system of boards and I can just take those out and get to it easily and I've got a similar dividing system of boards between the two bins I'll take those ones out and that will enable me to just shift all the top layer into this bin here to start again in in an ideal world I'd start this off with some soil but to be honest with you I haven't got any and I'm going to need it for a special project I've got looking a bit dry I think I don't want to go too far below that so I'm going to take the rest of that off the top off of that out of that bin and put it into this bin I've got my middle boards back in place now this side is not too bad it just needs uh, sieving I'm going to sieve out some of this stuff put it into this carry bin here compost bin take it round to the project that's what's left after sieving the compost you've got loads of tiny little particles and on this side now we've got ooh, quite a lot of usable compost which was at the bottom of this bin yeah it's got to be sieved but got me trusty little sieve I've got a brilliant technique going doesn't take long at all so there you go guys build your compost up and use it this was an old pond liner I'm actually going to drill some holes in the bottom of here I reckon that might be enough got our logs in the bottom our leaves on top and we've got that pot there now what do you think we're going to do next sure you've guessed it more dried up old logs in the bottom of there that's already got holes in it that's what the bamboo plant came in these logs are already rotting down really well and they don't take long I tell you more of this leaf mold not properly broken down but and I bet you can guess what's going in on top of there that's filled up to about that high with sort of leaf mold and rotting compost and this one's filled up to about that high that's going to go in there like that the final one goes on there so what have we got here we've got a tower it's not a tatey tower it's for something else that is because I haven't got enough compost to fill all those containers times are hard this is just a summer project 
where I'm going to get a better yield out of my produce. Anyone guess what it is yet? That's the finished tower. I think you can guess what we've got going in there, guys. What's going to happen around here is the whole top stack there, I think, strawberries. There we go. Beautiful. They just need a larger pot to really do well. I mean, I'm no expert, as you know. Bring it back, guys, when it's all done. There we go. Parsley down the bottom. All the way around. And I've left deliberately a large gap between the parsley. That goes all the way around there because when the strawberries are on this level, send out their runners, like this one's already doing, I'm going to train those to go down the bottom and into these gaps here. So we have strawberries then still on the runners in there. So then we've got strawberries around the middle section. These are all pots that were too small really, sort of developed from runners from last year and then we've got coriander on this level and then the icing on the cake yep chives and I've moved it round to this section because you've got all my other strawberries over here look here's my other strawberries and they're doing well we're getting some nice strawberries there already this pot's doing lovely so this is my strawberry section and my herb section I hope you enjoyed that little update about what's going on in the garden during May if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment down below. Thank you for spending the time on my channel. Really appreciate that. And we'll see you again soon on Monkey Big Smoke. Take care, bye. A nice little friend of the garden. There. Ladybird.